Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Lock Pod, your favorite podcast. Some of you in particular, it's your absolute favorite. Others? I would hope so. I would, so mo- I would hope most it's their absolute favorite. You're just along for the ride, some people. Yeah, like so, and some people are trolling. What's that? I'm kind of along for the ride today. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> you worked late last night. Phoning it in. Jill, mm. Jill and Nico and Kevin worked late last night. Um, we I did. was working late last on night. A big, but, you do, on a big project. But the big, the big news... Hey, what's morning, John, by the way? Good morning. <laughs> Thanks the, for turning on the switch, John. The big news. <laughs> the signatures are in the house. They are. We <sighs> have the 4,500 signatures plus that I need to file for United States Senate in the house. That's like the news. John, that's the news, uh, the news sound. I, yeah, news, I wish news. I had that thing right So here. now we have to, we have to get... Uh, <laughs> just oh, shit. Just the on switch. Yet? Hey, do that. Let's go. Let's go. That that's all right. I mean, it's only like... I mean... Give me thirty seconds. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. So in the meantime, what we just said, but like that's that's big. It's news. Exciting. That's it's huge. I'm excited for you. It's a requirement. It is not every day that somebody files for the United States Senate. So congratulations. It's not every day. I agree. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty unbelievable. It took. I I was asked yesterday by Brian Howie uh, how many people do I think helped us along with this project. I estimated fifty. I would say higher for really? sure. Yeah, I would yeah. say closer to hundred. I bet. Really. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. I would say absolutely Brian Howie around the state. <clears throat> Brian, did you hear that? It's clo- by, by the way, Brian Howie is going to be a guest soon. Him nice. And I were talking about yesterday. I want to thank him for making me number 34. <laughs> you're, you're tight. <laughs> I, you're, no, it's I like split it. And I split it's it. It's like you're right. It's 68. Right. Bump that up. What can we do to make that higher? <laughs> a half of 34. Is I know what I could have done to high. make it a lot lower, not get the signatures. <laughs> a half of 34 is not that high. Tom, you're I right. heard you had some big news. <laughs> Good morning, Lockpod. You're probably wondering what the big news is. McDermott for Indiana campaign announcement. Thank you, Kevin. Tom has cleared the 4,500 signature hurdle. What? Yep, the signatures are in the house. Smith Sersick is in possession of 4,500 signatures that are prerequisite to file for United States Senate in the state of Indiana. This is Tom McDermott, and I'm here to report. (laughs) We will drive these signatures. Over to you, Tom. Thank you, Kevin. (laughs) We will drive these signatures. Via armored personnel carrier <laughs> from <laughs> Munster, Indiana, to the capital city of Indianapolis, where to capital city to Mayor the state McDermott house. will under armed escort, <laughs> also known as Kevin, Kevin and John, Smith. <laughs> take the football to the Secretary of State's office, where the he will f- file, <laughs> where he will file That's for great. United States Senate. That's great. That's football. happening. Today. Yeah, today. We're going to beat the storm. We're Why gonna... today? Because <laughs> Snowmageddon is on the way. <laughs> yes! Right? Because Winter is coming, yeah. That's Winter another. Hey, do, do that again, oh, John. that'd be good, John. Do that again. Really? Oh, do, do it. Oh, ready? God. Okay, here you go. Yeah, he's here, obsessed go. now. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Snowmageddon is bearing down on Chicago. The question on everybody's mind, will it trap Mayor McDermott in Northwest Indiana, <laughs> making it unable for him to qualify for U.S. Senate? More later on this developing story. And you oh. say, back to you, Kevin. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That was really good. <laughs> we'll we're get there. We're getting to be a real news show, aren't we, John? That is <laughs> very I, yes. is breaking. Is that what we're supposed to be? Breaking news. It's infotainment. Oh, okay. Yes. Good. I like that word. It is. I mean, infotainment. Infotainment. Hmm. So, what, what that means is. Hear that, is Belgium? We give you a little fact, and then we entertain you with. The little bit of fact. In and this I case, stress it's the signatures. Little. We got the signatures. And we entertained with it. We did a whole bit off of we got the signatures in the house. I do have to tell you. And we also threw in that nugget about Snowmageddon's on the way. Yeah. yeah I mean, I was so kind of just concerned about the, the signatures, just like having them here. I made sure to unplug all the um, like little heaters that people have under their desks <laughs> and stuff like that. Double check, the alarm, the, double check the alarm system. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just turn up the thermostat. I was only gone for like four hours <laughs> right. between when we left and when I got here this morning. It's 64 in here. <laughs> yeah. There's icicles. Is yeah. it true you hired guards to watch yeah. the office overnight? <laughs> yeah, I have Sandy and Madeline. They were guards. Uh, quite the guard. Snipers on the roof of the Red yeah. Lobster. They pulled, they pulled an all-nighter last night. <laughs> wow. This fa- Hey, congratulations. It's exciting. That is a huge accomplishment. It is very cool. How do you and feel about it? I mean, like, and, well, like I tell you, when it was really hitting me hard when uh, we had like dozens and dozens of people all over the state knocking on doors for my campaign, that was when I was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. it, to me, it was like very uh, surreal. Like, got to be like, humbling a little bit, you know? Like, totally. you say, think about this. It's think about the totally thousands humbling. of people who signed the petition saying, I want Tom McDermott right. on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah. All That's over the pretty state. cool, too. Yeah. From every, almost every county. Right. Uh, definitely every district. Obviously. And it's crazy. <laughs> like, some parts of the state where we were, how excited people were that mm-hmm. I was running. And then other parts, it was like pulling teeth 
you know we literally yeah. had to like get paid assassins in the street to uh, to get these signatures so yeah it was exciting i Con- mean a contractor not assassins that's right not assassins <laughs> yeah. we, we had people do, do the news break again <laughs> oh my god oh, man, man. You now gotta, too ready? much too ready? much hold just it, add it hold to your do favorite it. do it john do it okay i got a good one ready all right <laughs> yep hit it ready. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Lockpod, Mayor McDermott hires assassins for U.S. Senate <laughs> campaign. More on his developing story. We've got a big news day, John. Huge. Follow up. Leave that queued up. Um, <laughs> yeah, just leave it at the <laughs> ready. Yeah, just, John, just, just ready to go. <laughs> it is Russian, by the way. If you can see it on YouTube right now, like, that is like Tass's intro. Yeah, let me throw it's it It's like that. a red roll. <laughs> Maybe it's Pravda. It's Pravda. It's or something Tass. Russian. Right. Isn't Which one? BBC red, too? Yes, is BBC it? is uh, red. I wonder if it is BBC. But BBC why would they make blue? the world red? It looked like we had nuclear war or something. That's true, yeah. But I got your attention. The ocean is red. It's yeah, Mars. It's, 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 it looks like Mars. Anyway, hey, uh, I put up a... So anyway, the signatures are in the house. We are filing Exciting. today. I'm excited for you. Snowmageddon is on the way. We're expected to get over a foot of snow where we live. Within, is that true? Between Wednesday and Thursday. Whoa. Yeah. <sighs> like... You didn't is, know this, Kevin? I did like, not where know. Where have you been? I didn't... I heard like six... Then I heard petition. 12, then I heard 78. I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was for me. I overestimate always. Yeah. No, we're supposed to get uh, about 10 inches on Wednesday, starting tonight, Tuesday night, into Wednesday, and then Thursday. Uh, Hopefully Wednesday, tapering Thursday, off Thursday. Lake effect for us. We get the okay. double whammy. So okay. it's supposed to be like a foot, foot and a half of snow at the end of the day, uh, which means I was supposed to file on Wednesday, and we didn't want to take a chance that. We get four feet of snow, and I cannot get to Indianapolis on Friday to file. So let me ask you this. Like, as a mayor, <clears throat> I'm sure, like, snow is one of those things where the mm-hmm. phone calls just start rolling in. I get PTSD when it snows. What's the, like, what's the advice to residents? Like, hey, be patient. Or, it hey, doesn't matter what I sell them because they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. People are jerks. <laughs> okay? Spoiled brats. And they call up the mayor's office, and they call us lazy. They call my employees lazy. They say that we intentionally push snow in their driveway. It's That's like my favorite. you live in Chicago mm-hmm. and it's February. OK, like we forget this sometimes. I think that, you know, when the snow hits the ground, Hammond has 300 miles of streets. I can't just snap my fingers and make it disappear and make it like perfect. Right. My guys have to work hard and they'll work all night uh, during an event like this. I'll probably work two days straight with like breaks for naps and then and still People will call in and yell at my staff. People will call us lazy. People will whine and cry. It happened yesterday. They don't say I witnessed thank you. a call to Sharon, lady they screaming, uh, cursing at her. Yeah. I hate Hammond. Right. They, they, Wait, they, it didn't even snow yet. I know. She was still complaining <laughs> that they had, they had put, like you said, they had pushed the snow over her drive. I'm thinking to myself, oh. right. when that happens to me, I just go out there and shovel the, By the way, shovel the driveway. You have to. Our yeah. guys what else are they going to do? Our do guys you, are doing 25 miles an hour throwing snow because we're our job is to get the, the arteries clear. we want to get the arteries open so that we can get around especially the mains right so we're we're not stopping and throwing where they have they have their their blade cocked That's and right. they drive and it just throws of course what are we supposed to do they're not going to go around my driveway, around driveway and like oh i can't it's, push snow onto kevin's driveway if we did that we would never get the arteries clear and then people would be bitching because not everybody has an suv and truthfully you know i don't even necessarily i don't even expect in a huge snowstorm that my street's going to be done within the first day like they'll get to it you put it in four-wheel drive they'll get to it right and uh, by the way like let's just assume wednesday and thursday well wednesday's the last cause where we live Mm -hmm. up in the chicago area wednesday's the last cause and actually this goes all the way down to like lafayette yeah even further down towards indy so it's a so basically if we were relying on our original plan wednesday we would have been prevented from getting indy Thursday, it's no guarantee we could have gotten down there, and the deadline is Friday. So there's no reason to risk it. So you and I are driving down today and yeah. back. <laughs> yes. And John. So. Yes, down and back. Yeah. Hey, I, I put up a picture. Yesterday, I did another down and back, over and back, this one, Fort Wayne. Yeah. That's fun. You know what, though? Six hours on the road. It was important. There was some third district signatures we needed to get and back second, here. And buddy. I mm-hmm. ended up pulling in hundreds of signatures we needed. And then uh, one of our super volunteers out east is a young man named Tyler. Uh, Love this kid. Goes to Northrop High School. Tyler W., let's just say mm-hmm. that, right? Tyler's a great young man. He helped coordinate, uh, assemble, and certify over 300 signatures for us in the 3rd Congressional District. When I talked to him, I was like, hey, so and we're talking. I'm kind of like just doing a little interview, not even interview, just get to know you thing. And I was like, hey, so Tyler, where do you work or where'd you go to college? He goes, oh, no, I'm a senior in high school. And I was like, wow. Wow. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's uh, going to Ball State next year. Nice. And uh, he basically took charge of assembling all of our signatures in the third, which is Fort Wayne, which is three hours from my house. So to have somebody like Tyler on the ground was huge for us. And I drove out there yesterday to get the signatures and to take a picture with Tyler. And so I take a picture with him, and I, he nice. was so like I could tell he was like geeked a little proud. bit. Yeah, I, I have. Why it. wouldn't I, he? Be? I was looking for it. I found oh, it nice! Here. There let he is. Me, yeah. So I'm this. like, yeah. and so right before, right. so we're him and I just got done certifying it in front of the Allen County uh, Board of Re- uh, Voters and Registration. Okay, and I was like, Tyler, I want to take a selfie with you, and he has his mask on, and I'm like, dude. I go, take your mask off, okay? So we can take this picture, and then you can put it right back on. He's like, okay, no problem, Mary. And he always wears his mask, by the way. He does. And then, by the way, look around my neck. I have my, my neck gator, right? So I took it. And, of course, we get the, uh, the Uh-oh. COVID police. The, the, the mask shamers? Yeah. It's like we're celebrating the hard work of a high school senior, and this COVID shamer is like, no mask. Mayor, your mask is unsatisfactory. The kid doesn't have a mask wow. on. I'm like, go F yourself. Yeah. Who nice. is that person? First it's like, off, what do you do? Just go around the internet yeah. and every time someone doesn't have a mask, right? I just put no mask. If you're that person, you really have no life. Yeah. Like, just mind your Relax. own freaking business. Dude. Relax. Seriously. Like, go, go F yourself. Seriously. Yeah. And like, if is... you're that person, like, what a freaking loser, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I think everybody's trying to be responsible for COVID. I am a triple vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Okay. I wash my hands. I publicly distance. I'm wearing my neck gaiter all the time and I'm triple vaccinated. Okay. And you have Tyler, the nasal spray. I do with, nasal spray. <laughs> that's right. right. I work nasal, out. I do everything. Nasal passages are... So go screw yourself. If I want to take a picture, pull my mask down, take a picture with a young super volunteer. And by okay? the way, Tyler is very, he's, I've never, I've rarely seen him without a mask. He's very sensitive to that. I asked him to take the mask yeah. off. He had it in his hand. He wasn't walking around with no mask right. on. Right. But if you're that person, you're a freaking loser, man. Seriously. Mind your own damn business. Mm. Like, it, John, am I preaching here? No, I, uh, Tom, I, I love what you're saying. I agree. Personally, I hate it. I hate that. Just mind yeah. your own God darn business. Right. Yeah. Jill, I mean, I think Jill, we does all, this drive you crazy. Oh, keyboard warriors. Absolutely. I think I think <laughs> we all know warriors. where where and when to wear our masks and we're responsible for it. And, we're, and if we're vaccinated. That's even I'm another, triple vaccinated. Yeah, and too. if there's another one offered, I'll get in line and I'll sure, get it. I have absolutely. no problem with it, right? I'm about as good as it comes. So if I take my freaking neck gator down to take a picture with a volunteer, mind your own god darn business. There you go. Seriously. All right. Like, god darn. Wouldn't our country be a lot better place without losers like that? Keyboard warriors? On? Yes. Yeah. Like, just go screw yourself, <laughs> Trolls, buddy. Like, yes. seriously, unfriend me and, like, stop looking at me. Seriously. Yep. Yep. Mm. God right. darn, man. It's so it. annoying. Back to the breaking news. You, you like that, John? <laughs> I love that. Oh, just, hey, just John, not getting some, a fourth and fifth jab. I got another know. breaking news. Ready, oh. John? Oh, God. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, ready? It's fourth time. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay. Really? Ready? Yeah. Okay, All here right. we go. Uh, play. Lockpot audience. Breaking news from McDermott campaign. Dan the Tracker is AWOL. MIA or AWOL? AWOL. <laughs> AWOL. Yes. Wow. Dan the Tracker is missing. More from Kevin Smith. Um, thank you, that, thank you, Tom. Does it have to do with your assassins that you hired? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because no. Kevin Smith did cite him. But yeah, um, I see Dan. Dan, Dan is, the Tracker uh, is not stalking me anymore. No, he's well. He hasn't been around. I think the last time we saw Dan was uh, Mayor's Night Out in December. We're just going to change his name to uh, Dan. 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 <laughs> he doesn't get the title anymore. Yes, his name yeah, so is Dan now. For those he's not of you Dan who remember, the Dan the Tracker was, or Dan as we now call him. Uh, is is a hired hand of the Todd Young campaign to like follow the mayor around and videotape him at events, which gives you an idea of what a creep Todd Young is, because he <laughs> hired Dan the Tracker to track me and literally follow me around and take video and take pictures. And what Todd didn't realize is I befriended Dan the he's Tracker. He's a nice kid. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever. Look, he got job, hired to but follow somebody around. Creepy That's job, weird. but but he's church going young man. And yeah. then I took an unusual tact. Uh, I was nice to him. And then, like, when I would show up in public meetings and Dan the Tracker was tracking me, I would introduce the elected officials, and, <laughs> and I'd also introduce Dan the Tracker. And everybody's like, who the hell is Dan the Tracker? I'm like, that's the guy. He got hired by Todd Young to follow me around and videotape me. I would literally introduce him at public events like that. Yeah, so and I shamed him. He's not. Well, hopefully you shame the campaign as well. I mean, it, it's kind of weird to have somebody I will not around. hire somebody to follow around a United States senator and videotape him. I will not do that because I'm not a creep like Todd Young. Todd Young, one of the first things he does is hire Dan the Tracker, pay him Todd Young campaign money to follow Mayor McDermott around and videotape him, which means Todd Young is a creep. He's a creep, creepy creep. 
mm-hmm. and I'm never going to do that. I don't care what Todd Young does on his own time. I'm going to talk <laughs> about public policy. And he gets like, hey, let's, let's see the video of Mayor Tom. What did he do? He introduced <laughs> me at a mayor's night out, Todd Young. Like, so Dan, Dan the Tracker is missing. Uh, and, I just uh, want to see them all like in a little circle, a little campaign circle watching the video. And they're like, did he? Is he talking to you? What did he you? say? He's talking to you, Dan Let's make that into a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there we are. All right. Uh, let's do some ads and come back. Sure. And uh, go ahead. Oh, I'll start. All right. Start away. All right. Powering America. Pow. Season, uh, premier sponsor, season five, is Powering America. It's our premier sponsor. With the explosive growth of renewable energy in America today, call Powering America to meet your needs for renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle charges and solar power solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of... Powering America. That's right. Visit poweringnorthwestindiana.org. That is poweringnorthwestindiana.org. Grizzolia's Concrete was voted number one in the Times Best of the Region 2020 and 2021, and you can vote for them right now for 2022. Grizzolia's Concrete specializes in all of your concrete projects, and they've been doing, they've been using the original cement finish in the California style since 1972, and also offers stamped and colored concrete. Call now at 219-659-4127 to get your project lined up for the spring. Tortillas Nuevo León. Tortillas Nuevo León is the gold standard of Mexican cuisine throughout the Midwest. <clears throat> what is gold? I mean, gold in, is the... I mean, in, no, in uh, Spanish. Como se dice gold? Mm-hmm. In, I should know this. Spanish. Oh, my chat? gosh. All our chat is going to be all over this. It's so bad. Look for tortillas. How can I not know the word gold? Tortillas Nuevo León es, es <sighs> la, you know, gold standard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the Midwest, Chats look, like look where for are you, Chad? Look for Tortillas Nuevo Leon's popular red and white label at your local grocery store. Oro, 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 O R O. And then now, how about Standard? That's so embarrassing. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. What is Standard? That's <laughs> standard. It's probably like Standardo or something like that. <laughs> Oro Standardo. Right. <laughs> Thank right. you, Steve. The gold standard. <clears throat> Right. Oh, Steve Sir, second night. Thank Look you. for Tortillas Nuevo Leon's popular red and white label at your local grocery store and enjoy quality Mexican products made with local expertise. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, hechas con amor para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, hechas con amor para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. <laughs> Mics weren't off. Oh, really? Mics were off? No, they're always on. Try Electronics wants to be your complete communications provider. I was doing the magic. Try Electronics has been a leader in this industry for more than 55 years. They're dedicated to assisting our clients with their systems integration. It's a big day, John. This is live, Going down to Indianapolis. Try Electronics has been the expert. Try Electronics has the expertise and experience to provide superior results for a wide variety of projects. Call Try Electronics today. Jeez, oh, Pete. Call Try Electronics today at 800-722-6793. By Way Brewing. That's right. By Way Brewing is a family-friendly microbrewery in Hammond, Indiana, right off Kennedy, by the way. It's very close to my house. 8094. Right off the bike trail. It's good yes. food. Good booze. A good beer. Great food. Yeah. Anyway, it's a family-friendly microbrewery with a spacious tap room and an outside patio. Brewing Equipment offers a unique backdrop for your private event like weddings, reunions, and corporate parties. We are conveniently located just off of 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue South exit. Come on by and enjoy Byway's award-winning beers and unbeatable menu. All right, those are the ads. By the way, you know, we were talking about signatures, and I know that one of the things that <clears throat> we even talked about it last episode was just about this crazy kind of yes. law that Indiana has that is different than many other states. I mean, there's other ballot access requirements, but Indiana's is pretty egregious. And uh, I know you want it. I know we... We kind of chatted about this. It's going to leave me in a weird position, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. You, you three, plus our plus audience, our, our live audience is. <clears throat> so I, I was shocked because uh, we've been monitoring signatures throughout this. Yeah, for all candidates, right? Yeah, the state sends out like a daily. The state, like election commission. Um, I, th- I don't think it's not an official, right? It's, it's just not kind official, of a, but it's pretty official. Yeah, well, it's not official, but it's accurate. <laughs> Kinda right. I mean, it, so kind of. what like has that, to? You're, it's not a hundred percent official. Agreed, yeah. but it's like ninety nine. Sure, ninety ninety percent. So say. like that's pretty freaking accurate where I live, dude. If it's like ninety nine percent certain, I'm like, hey, it it relies on the counties to upload certain information, and it's not official. You can't like right. take it to the bank and Correct. say, look at this number, right? But it's accurate. Yeah, just to give you an example, like there were some counties 
that for some reason don't use the system. So we have petitions that I know are certified that aren't on the list. Okay. Like, for example. So it's mm -hmm. 95%. Sure. Accurate. Call it 95. I could live with 95. Okay, me too. If somebody said you're 95% <laughs> likely to live, would you feel pretty good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, would. yeah. I would. I'd be like not assessing on the 5%. Okay. And that's kind of, okay. I don't know. 95, John? Like if you were about to go up like on, let's yep. say. Uh, I mean, anything over 50. <laughs> that's like flip a coin. 95 flip is a coin. solid. It Here. is. Okay, I'm going to pick. Number. Okay. All right, Jill, I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 100. I want you to guess it. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Okay, go. Give me. 95. 71. <laughs> 71? No, that's not I right. guess 95. <laughs> you have to do five. Keep going. Wait, what? I got to do what? Come up with numbers, five numbers. Oh, um, 33. Okay. Um, 68. Uh-huh. 14. Uh-huh. And uh, Go seven, high. Se what? 17. Oh. Y you live. See? That's wow. how it works. How did that work? Wait, I Because I picked 21 in my head. <laughs> oh. And if she would have come up in five oh. chances, if she would have come up with 21... Oh then she man! Then she don't do it for me. Yes. Tom just invented Wordle Wait, Part Two. We're, we're, we're going to get to I that later, John. But yes, this is the working. numerical just trust Wordle. Me. You lived, okay? All right. You lived. Nerdle. Yes. If you would come up, I I picked a number between one and a hundred in my head, and you spat it off five numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So if you would have hit my number in those five, under you would have been scenario, the five, on the five. You would have guessed. You'd have been but you picking not, the five percent. But you did not, which means you lived. Wow. All there you right. Go. You're welcome. In this scenario, Jill. Thank you. You're welcome, Jill. Here in the studio. What okay. was the number? Okay, hold on. I'll 21. 21. 21. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, go, John. You got 86. Five. Okay. 41. You're uh -huh. dead. <laughs> 23. Uh -huh. Zero. Uh-huh. Oh, that doesn't count. That's not a number. No, one that's to, not a number. One, one to oh, one. Okay. 99. You live. Wow. <laughs> All right. I'm not doing this. 60, it was 61, John. <laughs> Don't add, I'm not doing this. You Kevin, have go, to do it go. now. No. Come you on. have to, Kevin. 67, okay. 24, 43, <laughs> 28, and 92. You live. You're dead, wow. dude. Thank I was nervous. I know. <laughs> I was, what was live. his number? You're, 87. You're just oh, generally nervous. I almost nervous. picked 87. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so the reason we're doing this stupid exercise is because I'm in a position where it's going to be awkward for me, okay? Because what's going on now is we have, first off, the requirements to run for U.S. Senate in Indiana. I'm going to read them up. Federal up. and state, right? Okay, so federally, uh, the U.S. Constitution says... No person shall be a senator who shall not have attained the age of 30. All Everybody running for Senate has attained the age of 30. Mm -hmm. Being nine years a citizen of the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is okay. written back in the 1780s. Yeah, right. So like this is back in the day when you were born in Ireland and you immigrated to America or, or you were born in other countries, okay? Um, and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state for which he shall be chosen. That's yeah, so you had to live in Indiana. Right, right you got to live in Indiana. Okay, so so what is it? I think isn't it twenty five for House, thirty for Senate, thirty five for President? Sure, you're thirty. Good. You're about I'm, thirty. I'm Who is 52. our youngest? Do we know youngest senator? senator? Yeah. Hmm. Good question. Very good question. Look it up. Where's Chat? I'm sure it's somebody like in the Steve Sersic. Sure Steve Sersic. Okay. So anyway, U.S. Constitution wise, we'll wait for Chat to come up with that. So I think everybody running for U.S. Congress is at thirty. They live in Indiana. They've been an inhabitant for nine years. I'm going to assume that. So now you go to Indiana Code, and it says, a candidate for the office of the United States Senator must have the qualifications provided for in Article 1, Section 3, Clause 3 of the Constitution of the United States. So these are the state requirements now. Right. State requirements says you have to meet Article 3, Section 3, Clause 3, which we just read to you. And then another part of the Indiana Code says, okay, hold on. I want to read this. John Ossoff, 34. Oh, wow. There you go. Wow. Okay. Um, Google so says right Todd now, Young. <laughs> Google says Todd no, it Young. Doesn't. No, does it really? It no. Does. Oh yeah, my it gosh, it does. <clears throat> Thank you, Luke. We're about, uh, I feel like Luke Indiana Code. Thank you, Google. Indiana Code has another provision on being a U.S. senator. I don't necessarily agree with this provision. However, it's the law. It is in the law. Yeah. It says Indiana Code 3828, Article, what was it? Section 3 8 2 8. Declaration of candidacy for U.S. senator or governor. Petitions required. Okay. It says a declaration of candidacy for the office of United States Senator or governor must be accompanied by a petition signed by at least 4,500 voters of the state, including at least 500 voters from each congressional district. Which means nine times five is 4,500. 4, right. And obviously. It used to be 11. Right. It used to be 11 congressional districts in India. Well. And then it went to 10 and now it's down to nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is. Uh, these are the prerequisites. You have to comply with Article 3, Section 3, Clause 3 of the U.S. Constitution, 
and you have to have 4,500 signatures from each congressional district. In Indiana, right? In that's, Indiana. that's the Indiana rule. It's the, an Indiana, Indiana code rule. Right. I don't necessarily think this is a wonderful law. Mm-mm. I think it's... I, I just went through this process. It's It's akin to... Going into a forest with a candle in your hand, and it's a dark forest, and you're supposed to get through this forest and get on the other side where there's civilization, and they just say, here's your candle. Good luck. Walk through the forest. I'll see you in the city on the other side, right? Find 4,500 friends along the way. And we did it. Yeah. My campaign for the last month, month and a half, has been fully, wholly focused on getting 500 signatures in each congressional district. We spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, mm-hmm. We drove thousands of miles in our car. Just ask Jill. Right, Jill? <laughs> just, well, just yesterday. <laughs> Kev, like Kevin said, I, I estimated 50 volunteers. Kevin said closer to 100 volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thousands of hours. We could have been doing a lot of things over the last month, month and a half, yes. instead of gathering these signatures. Amen. We could have been raising money. I could have been going across the state, knocking on doors, like just talking to people. We instead focused our attention in our campaign to this requirement under the Indiana code. Personally, I think it's bullshit that the Indiana code has this in there. Cause what that does is if you're running for two offices in Indiana, you're protected. If you're running for United States Senator, or if you're running for governor, you're protected by this mechanism that the Indiana general assembly put into our law that says you have to get 500 signatures. And it well, yeah. is, it is a massive undertaking. Look what you did last year. Look what happened when there wasn't a requirement. How many people ran it yeah, for, for Congress point. in 2020? When I ran for Congress in 2020, <laughs> there's no such requirement to run for Congress. There was 14 people running in my race, I mean, which that, is that, ridiculous. It is, but it's also just goes to show you if there's no, if there's, I mean, that just goes to show you the opposite. Maybe that's, that's the true, argument Kevin. that people that, like to make. Exactly. Like, oh, well, we don't want 14 people running for U.S. Senate. Or we governor, want or governor. or governor. Right. I mean, I guess that's the argument. I there were so that, many people running in my congressional race. I was on page two, yeah. which basically killed my campaign well, being I mean, on page got, two of the listen ballot. to episode one season one and yeah, two right. for those for many references as to what <laughs> appropriately <laughs> titled wtf <laughs> happens part one and two great episodes by the way but what this know. so you're right kevin so when you run for congress there's no regulation on who could file and everybody could file run for mayor run for city council right. run for anybody state could file. senate run for state house and completely on the other end of things when you run for u.s senate or you run for governor you have to go through this ridiculous process and for president in the, if you want to get in the and ballot, for president yeah. but like a process that's going to require thousands of hours mm-hmm. and and hundreds of people helping and just a massive logistical undertaking that if you don't do it you don't get on the ballot because that's what the law is. So like to give you an idea, if I get a signature in Floyd County. Sure. Okay. Somebody gives me 10 signatures here, mayor. I got 10 signatures for you to run for us Senate mm-hmm. from Floyd County. I'm like, thank you. I have to take your signatures that you give me to the Floyd County clerk. Correct. And then the Floyd County clerk has to go through and say, yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. And they say, okay, you got 10 valid signatures. Mm-hmm. I got to get those 10 signatures back to the office of Smith Sersick in Munster, Indiana, where we store them, compile them. Right. And yeah. then once that's Log all compiled, them. we have to take them down to the Indiana secretary the of state's original office. pieces of paper, everyone. Right. And if yes. we mess up anything, if you lose them. It jeopardizes my fire. campaign because I didn't get 500 signatures per congressional district. Right. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's these original pieces of paper that have to go from the collector to the clerk to be certified by the clerk, back to the campaign, to the candidate, down to the state house. I mean, it's really logistically, kind of cra- logistically crazy. It's in today's day, a and age. major undertaking. I yeah. don't want to ride in this envoy. I feel like someone's going to like hijack the vehicle. <laughs> Dude. On the Dude, way down. That's why it's somebody car. sweep the vehicle before you we guys right? leave. for sure. The little mirror on the stick. <laughs> the vehicle blows up and out. there's just like the paper everywhere. <laughs> all of our yeah. all of our signatures are just like raining snow on us. But. Uh, <sighs> I guess if we blew up in a vehicle, we wouldn't have to worry about the right. signatures anymore. We'd, we'd hit one of those numbers that you thought in your head. 87. <laughs> oh, boom. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> it just blows up. So anyway, the reason I'm telling you all this is I didn't realize that if you don't re- meet the requirements of office that you could file anyway. Yeah, I mean, that happens a lot. I mean, just oh, wow. talking locally, right, from a election board perspective, we hit, we hit challenges all the time and in Indiana. Just if you can file for office, even if you don't, let's say I lived in Illinois and I decided I'm going to file for mayor uh, in Hammond, in Hammond right. right? And the mayor's like, that dude lives in, you know, so in you Chicago. can file. You can file, sure. There's nothing and, and, and it'll say Kevin Smith from Cal City filed to run for Hammond and mayor. Sure. Right? It won't say of Cal City. It'll just say a guy named Kevin Smith 
who happens to live in Cal City, right. filed to run for mayor. And then so and you then, could and run. the election board, they don't have their, their job is not to review and weigh in on just say, what hey, you Kevin filed. Smith, you live in Cal City, right? right? They just stamp it uh-huh. and say so you're it. a candidate. And then then there's a list of candidates as of this Friday so at noon. It would be my job as Mayor Hammond to or, police or any other ballot. voter. Or and say that guy lives in Cal City, mm-hmm. and then we challenge you. Correct, and then there's a hearing on the challenge. And then if it's determined that you actually live in Cal City, you're, you're off probably the, ballot. the election board in mm-hmm. Lake County would knock you off the ballot. That's correct. Okay, so I was unaware of this, and that happens by the way that you could file to run for office even though you didn't hit the signatures, which or didn't it, meet the requirements. Let's say I was 29 and I wanted to run for Senate. Let's right? just say that one of the candidates, there's five announced candidates running for U.S. Senate: Todd Young, myself. Todd Young has a primary challenger that is getting real close to the signature requirement. Yeah. I close. have two challengers that are... One is not close at all in signatures, and one is relatively close. Okay. You know? The person that's running against me that's not close at all in the signatures filed for U.S. Senate yesterday. Which I was like, what? And they are not close at all. They no, didn't they, come anywhere near the 4,000. I 4, want to say it's like in the 1,000 range, 1,500 right. range right? of total signatures. They now, have. personally... Indiana code 3828, I think, is ridiculous. Over, It's a ridiculous overreach. It's a ridiculous amount of work you have to do. It, it's probably designed to protect the incumbents, and I think it should be changed. However, it is the law in Indiana, yeah, right? that's the rules we play by right now. It's like— You had to play by them. I don't—you know, there's a lot of rules in Indiana. A lot of laws in Indiana, I think, need to be changed. Mm-hmm. Okay? This is definitely one of them. However— it is the law in Indiana. This is what the Indiana Code says you must meet to file for U.S. Senate. So one of my opponents filed for U.S. Senate knowing full well they don't have the signature requirement that's required under Indiana Code. Yeah, which means that she's probably, I mean, well, not probably, she's subject to challenge. And I would think that the election commission is going to uphold the challenge. So Now, I'm not sure about, I have two opponents, potential opponents. One of them isn't even close. That's the one that filed for office. Okay. I'm not sure about the other one where that person is, but you know, I'm ready for a challenge. I want somebody to challenge me. Challenge me. Todd, t- challenge my signatures. We yeah. have like 600 in each congressional district. Let's get them there. We're going to get them there. We're not, we're not going to crash. <laughs> we're not going to burn. We're going to get these things filed today. And I want you to challenge me. Anybody, right. please do that. Okay. Just Cause no, work. you know why? I don't want all that work. You know why? <laughs> Cause we're unchallengeable. We're I unchallengeable. Mean, I, yeah, These are I legit. Mean, we, we feel did very it. confident. We worked hard on it, and I'm ready to be challenged. But however, my opponent that filed yesterday, if she gets challenged, she's off the ballot. I, in my opinion, I don't see how, how no you way could run it. for U.S. There's Senate. no way around it. I don't see how you could run for U.S. Senate without the signature requirement. Can't we just tell Todd Young not to challenge us, and we won't challenge him? And you know, I'm let's, just, let's just I'm go sure. to I'm the... not going to challenge him. <laughs> I'm telling you straight up we're right not, now. Yeah, we're not challenging Todd Young. We are not challenging Todd Young. It's on signatures. We'll on challenge signature. him on the election. I will challenge him on many <laughs> issues. I'm not going to even look at one of his signatures. There's no... I mean, it, it doesn't really... I think that he learned his lesson from six years ago when he was short on signatures. I think he learned his lesson. That his, was a challenge by a Republican. Yeah, but it in this case, a... I could tell you, I could care less about Todd Young's signatures. I'm not going to even pay... Spend one second of my time looking at his signatures, okay? And if he wants to challenge me, knock himself out, right? Which I think is kind of a weak move, but But, whatever. Kevin, we know, as particularly our opponents, we know how many signatures they have based on the unofficial emails that were sent around the state, mm-hmm. right? We know yes. that one of them, the one that filed yesterday, isn't even close. Yeah. Isn't even close. So, like, what am I supposed to do? Be a nice guy? Like, I'm going to sit back and say, oh, you know, this is a BS law. She should be allowed to run anyway. That's... I mean, we, we may think that, but I mean, the rules are the rules. I do think that. Yeah. I think it's a ridiculous law. I but think the, it's unnecessary. But However, the, the rules are the rules. If, yeah. If you were like a football coach and you had a big game coming up and you found out the other team was playing a player that was in, ineligible and you're like, oh, you know what? It's just one player. You're going to challenge that. Or, I mean, look, they cheated. Yeah. Maybe another way to look at that is if you, if you have a challenger that, you know, doesn't that you're supposed to beat 63 to nothing, you're not going to take it easy on them. You got to. Got to steamroll him. I would take it easy on him. Yeah. 63 nothing. Well, I mean, you got to get there first. I'd put, put what if you needed ups. to win 63 nothing? Then I would get You'd up have to, to do it. Okay. All right. That's, I guess, what I'm but saying. But what so. I'm saying is, I would be anybody in my position in a situation like this would look at the law and say, and I made a conscious decision a month and a half ago that we are definitely not going to come up short on the signatures. Kevin, right? Trust me, I, that, that day yeah. is in my memory. 
It's it, this process, Jill. I don't have to tell you, John. I don't have to tell you. This is a major process that we just did, mm -hmm. and we did it according to the law, right? And about a month and a half ago, there was some concern going around the campaign. Even a couple weeks ago, there was concern that we may not get there, it right? Was concerning. And when that was brought to me, what did I say? We're going to get there. We have to get there. Mm -hmm. I said, if it's left to the state committee to determine who's going to be the U.S. Senate candidate, I'm going to freaking drop out. If I can't get my well, signatures. I mean, it almost makes it sound like. I'm weak. I'm, yeah, I'm going to rely on somebody else to I don't want the state the central committee to put me on the ballot. You know, if, I can't get five, that position. if I can't get 500 signatures for each congressional district, I have no business running for U.S. Senate. So let me ask you this. Once we get through this madness about signatures, I mean, what's your, I mean, obviously it's going to feel good to put it behind you. Yes. And just get onto the issues and right. tell Hoosiers about why right. you're the best person to be their senator. Right. I and mean, that's the exciting part to me is like, let's get through this. Let's By get over way. it. Let's turn them in and let's start campaigning. How about this? There's a possibility that I could have no opponent yeah. until November. And there's a possibility that Todd Young would have a primary, yeah. which be, would be make me so happy. It, it'd give me that special little <laughs> smile that I could like save money up between now and November of 22 to beat Todd Young in November while Todd Young has to spend a large part of his nest egg in May fighting an internal challenge, a Trump back candidate, by the way, John, that's running against Todd Young. And then Todd Young has to obviously get through that primary. And if he's successful, he has to come up against me. And if he's not successful, I'm running against the wait, know, wait, wait, John, you Trump backed the, the, the opponent of Todd Young. Well, he's, I think he's calling Todd Young, not a real Republican. Yeah. Which means he's Trump back. So John, I, I don't think know this if might he's be Trump a, back. John, another yeah, right. potential job. For you, Todd Young's opponent. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually like, he's short in the first. And I was like very tempted to knock some doors. <laughs> we yesterday. help him. Dude, I was like, man, I could knock on some doors. You let's know? Uh, let's do ads and come back and talk about Trump. All Yay. right. Why don't you start us off there, big guy? I would be happy to <laughs> if I could find my notes. Well, you're like the one that called for this. You're like, rap, know, put, a, put an end to it. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> Come on, Kevin. Sorry, John. We're live, man. Miss we Print. <laughs> oh, I was Miss Print specializes in the highest quality <laughs> signs there. and printing on time and within budget. Miss Print's experience in technology allows them to offer custom commercial on demand printing and sign solutions you can count on. Rick Baltensberger and his team have served the Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana market for over 30 years. They have two convenient locations in Munster and in Hammond, and that's right, their home of the world famous. Metal business card. Ask Rick, you, Rick about it. Saw Rick yesterday. He says hello. Executive Suite Squared, commonly known as ES2, is a first-class executive office environment located on 8094 at Kennedy Avenue. ES2 offers flexible membership plans that provide the privacy of dedicated, fully furnished offices with 24-7 secured access, so no matter how big or small your business may be, they can accommodate the way you work. For more information on their basic or private office membership packages or to rent, one of their state-of-the-art conference rooms, call them at 219-844-2901 or visit them at Executive Suites 2. That's Executive Suites, the number two, dot com. You know what's crazy? Today's all about the Constitution. I, I was looking at the next bits, and we're doing uh, another part on the Constitution. It's interesting and funny, by the way. But that's, we've been quoting the Infotainment. Constitution. Infotainment. Today is like Constitution, Constitution Day. Day. Constitution Day on Lockpot. Should have brought my pocket Constitution. I left it again in, downstairs in my office. Should that be the title? Constitution, Constitution Day. Yeah. Uh, hashtag dork, right? <laughs> my, 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 I got my pocket Constitution. <laughs> Fix those binoculars. Yeah. It's nice to have. Woo! Kevin. Thank you to the Federalist yeah. Society for that. But I'm not <laughs> a member. Professor. I love Kevin. Sent me one. What do, I forgot. We're on oh, Challenger. My bad. Talk about Valentine's Day. Challenger Learning Center. This Valentine's Day, embark on a date like Nike. I'm going to do it in a sexy voice. <laughs> All right. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't know you had one. I do. Music. You have a sexy voice? Yes. All right, Marissa, chime in if this is Tom's sexy voice. Challenger Learning Center. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> this Valentine's Day, embark on a date like like no other. John, turn my You're headphones off. You're just whispering. Can you turn my headphones off, please? <laughs> this Valentine's Day, embark on a date like like no other to create a love connection for a lonely Mars rover. Oh, yeah. That's right. Join Challenger Learning <laughs> Center on Saturday, February 12th from 5 to 8 p.m. in a brand new Red Planet Romance event with dinner and drinks presented by Byway Brewery. Register today at clcnwi.com. To quote George Costanza. With a kiss at the end. Yeah. That's good. a kiss from the locomotive, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Red Planet Romance. Let's get oh, the new year yeah. started. I wonder if they're talking. You know what? This came at Brewery ad. It may be very timely today. Isn't it Chinese New Year? Let's get the is new it? year started. Okay, yes. Is it year it's of the tiger? Oh, year of the tiger. tiger. Let's get the year of the tiger started. 
With the Michelob Ultra, Ultra has only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, so it's sure to keep your resolutions in check while continuing to be one of the fastest-growing brands nationally and in the region. Take your resolutions to the next level and try an organic light lager. With only 2.5 carbs and 85 calories, Ultra Pure Gold is brewed for your healthy lifestyle. Check out calbrew.com or Calbrew's Facebook page for brand info and giveaways. Cheers with beers. Happy Chinese New Year, the year of the tiger. Good stuff. Kung Hao Fat Choi. Yeah. Oh, wow. Check that out. Look at but, you, Jill. Yeah, I, I saw some, uh, I forgot, it was like a documentary where they went to China and they were asking people about Kung Pao. Uh, Kung Pao? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know General Kung Pao? And they were like, I've never heard of that guy. I think that's just an American thing. I speaking of America, yeah. speaking of America. Mayor Tom Travels. Oh. On the road you? again. Besides Fort Wayne. Did, I added this. Did you see that? I, I did. Because we updated it. Where, where'd you go? Um, besides Fort Wayne, we already talked about Fort Wayne. We are starting to like increase the maritime travels now that we've wrapped up the signature requirements. Almost. So uh, I started <laughs> off, uh, went to, uh, uh, he's running for office right now. He's running for Indiana Senate. Uh, and uh, it's a friend of mine I met through, uh, he's like, runs like a venture capitalist firm for veterans called Bunker, Bunker Labs. Very cool. That's awesome. And he's a Chicago resident to move to the He's region. a veteran? He's a veteran, a Navy officer. So uh, as soon as my wife, Marissa, met him, is, this is Todd Connor I'm talking about. As soon as my wife, Marissa, met him, she met him at an event they held at Emerson House, which is like a bed and breakfast that, uh, uh, that event Todd, center in LaPorte. Todd and his husband own in uh, LaPorte County, which is gorgeous. But they had a huge fundraiser there, and my wife met him, and she called me. She's like, Tom, I just met this guy. You're going to love this guy. You got to meet him, Todd Connor. And I'd heard about him. I'd never met him, though. And so you Marissa, call him sir, because he was an officer. <laughs> that's interesting. He was an officer. <laughs> I was enlisted, but no, I do not. But it, the cool thing is, Marissa just knew as soon as she met him, she's like, "This is the kind of guy Tom would love." And yeah. she set up a dinner with me and him and her. Like nice, and we just totally hit it off. I love this guy. I think he's awesome, and he's, you know, obviously him and I had a lot in common. I was in earlier than him. He got in shortly after I got out. He was he on subs or no? No, he's on surface ships. Uh, in uh, I forgot what his job was. Uh, what he did in particular, but um, him and I just really hit it off and he's really into politics and he moved from Chicago to the region and he's obviously, I said he was running for uh, Indiana Senate, but just a great guy. Uh, We really became, you know, fast friends and uh, I introduced Kevin to him the other day. got to meet him. He's a really, a really good guy and real smart and kind of impressive. I was impressed. Yeah, totally, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we had lunch with him out in uh, Michigan City, which is nice Uh, and uh, uh, I did a, a, another great thing I, I like to do when I'm campaigning is go to different churches. Um, I, I would go to church like when I ran for Congress, I was going to church in, uh, in Gary. A lot of churches. You went out in to Gary. Fort Wayne a couple weeks went, ago. Well, yeah, I went to Fort Wayne a couple weeks ago. I just did uh, Anthem Church in Hammond. Great church. Oh, man. It used I, to be a synagogue, by the way. You know, Pastor Sam there. He's Pastor Sam is like 40, probably, right? Yeah, if that. Yeah, probably. You're right. Probably right 40, around 40. By now. Yeah. That guy is absolutely amazing. He's a superstar. I'm telling you, man, mm-hmm. I, I sit through his sermons and I'm just like shaking my head, like how much of an impact he makes. The, it's Lord, like, the Lord gave him a, a, uh, there's talent. no doubt in my mind. Yeah. He is so good about like relating the Bible to what you're going through. I swear. Every time I leave there, I feel like he's like giving a sermon, talking yeah, he right talks to me. To, yeah. It's, it's interesting. He's I feel a, he's like it's tr- like you're a true me. preacher. Yeah. He is the best man. I'm like, in, this is a guy that's 12 years younger than me. And I'm like a total fan. And I, I went to Anthem, Anthem Church, and they were so sweet to me. They gave me a shirt. They let me come up on stage and say hi to everybody. It was just like they were their their band. And by the way, Hammond's got just phenomenal bands. We had that gospel choir, breakfast. You did, I'm sorry, choir. Thank you. They have okay. Band. They have some band. Okay, whatever. You're right, choir. I guess right. you, whatever. It's a church. Yes, they uh, have a really cool one. They they performed at Gospel Breakfast no, last year great. at Fest, and they were Kevin. Awesome. That's one of the things, honestly, that I'm lucky in regard because. I go boring Catholic church mm-hmm. and Catholic church, you know, if you have like mass is mass, but if you have know. like a guitar, it's like, edgy. <laughs> it's like edgy, right? Yeah, agreed, you go agreed. to, you go to churches in Gary agreed. or Fort Wayne, or you go uh, to Anthem church. <laughs> and it's like a production with like <laughs> great choir and great singers and great musicians. It's, it's more, it's more of a celebration. So like Anthem church, let's say it's an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. You're doing about 45 minutes of it's like, Enter- not entertainment. They're preaching. They're singing about God and Jesus and like, but like it's great. And then like the pastor preaches for like forty five minutes, and you go home. It's I think like, I think the interesting thing, like you said, that's one of the neat things about being mayor. You get to see different how lucky. folks different. You yeah. know how they celebrate on Sunday. You know mm-hmm. how they 
Yeah, I think it's really cool. But anyway, I did that. Um, I went to Fort Wayne again uh, for a down and back yesterday. And th- that's not easy, man. Driving to Fort Wayne, I did a couple appointments. I So as soon as I walk into Fort Wayne, this is pretty crazy because I'm not used to this. I walk into the Fort Wayne government building and I walk up to the front desk and I'm like, hey, I need to get to the uh, Department of Voter Registration. And as soon as I said that, somebody goes, Mayor McDermott? Whoa. When I turn around, she's like, hey, how's it going? I work in that office. You want to come with me? I'm oh, like, nice. sure. And she was a great lady. She like walked me through the whole building and I was just, oh, that's pretty cool. I was like tripping out that somebody recognized me in Fort Wayne, which I'm not used to. I, obviously my picture and my, you know, is all over the I place. I think you're going to see that a little more. My advertisement is working obviously because, uh, but she was great. And she told me about our great young, uh, volunteer out in Fort Wayne, how Tyler and how all the ladies in the office think he's cute. <laughs> and He's so awesome, man. That's he did, th- he did 300. Impressive. He was like, your... I mean, obviously we had a lot of help from a lot of people, right? Like Tyler and Fort Isn't Wayne. Isn't it cool there. to see a young man in yes. high school step up like that? I, this guy's got a future absolutely. in politics, man. So I, I made sure I took that picture with him yesterday. Yeah. And then, uh, I did a, a good friend, good candidate thing. I stopped by Mayor Tom Henry's office for a drop by. How was that? Just a drop by. T- Mayor Henry. Yeah. So I stopped by. First off, his office is pimp. Really? Oh, man. It's Are you the, jealous? It's like, <laughs> it's very nice. Wow. It is so cool. I was like, wow, Tom. Like, it's the nicest mayor's office I've seen probably. And, 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 his he, he Tom's such a great guy, and he's such, done such a great job in Fort Wayne. Like that downtown you, is unbelievable. Fort Wayne to me is one of the most pleasant surprises of me campaigning so far. Because I, you know, I, I don't get a lot of chances to stay in Fort Wayne now. I do, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I didn't get a lot of chances to stay and go out to different establishments and go to churches. And now that I've been hanging out in Fort Wayne a lot more, I'm just like every time I see Tom, I'm like, man, Tom, it's impressive. I mean, it's they, a Republican they, area. He's a Democratic mayor, mm-hmm. so he's been so he's got a five four Republican council. And like, I, I just, think they work together. He's a, got stuff done. Tom Henry is a stud mayor. He's just a great guy. And like, he's done so great with Fort Wayne. It's completely impressive, man. It makes me feel like a bad mayor. It, and I think I'm a good mayor, but like when I look at what he's done in Fort Wayne, I'm like, I should never rest on my laurels in Hammond. I got so much work to do. I don't think you are. Not that but I'm not, stuff going I'm on. not, I'm not. But what I'm saying is sometimes I get impressed with myself. And then when I see a place like Fort Wayne, I put myself in my place. It puts me in my place. It's so amazing what he's done in Fort Wayne. I'm really like glad that I've gotten a chance to, to go around and see all these. But congratulations, Tom Henry. And also, interesting fact I thought was real cool. What, you know what his office number is, Jill? 219. No, that's my office number. No. Did you know <laughs> wow. that? My office number is 219. Wow. I didn't realize oh. that. I actually 219 and the 219. That's pretty badass, by the that way. That is. Uh huh. Anyway, what's Tom Henry's? It's even better. One. Nope. He's on the fourth floor. Oh. 420. 420. Yep. Mm-hmm. Office number 420. I wonder if he's pro-cannabis. I don't know. I was going to talk to him. I, I thought that would be inappropriate. Like, hey, 420. He's like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> <laughs> right. he's an older gentleman, right? He is an yes, older gentleman. Is. Sometimes when you talk to older gentlemen, you know, I noticed that when you're talking about cannabis with people in their 70s, it's yeah, like a totally it's a different tougher sell. Like if I was Must talking to your mom and dad about right, it, they would look right. at me like I was crazy. Agreed. Whereas if I talk to cannabis to somebody in their 40s. 40s. It's totally 40s different. and under. Yeah. For sure. It's They're like, like, I can't believe it was illegal. Absolutely. Right. right. 60s yeah. and over. Right. It's a, it's a toss up. So this next segment we're going to do is we're uh, basically going to pull clips from the Trump rally and we're going to talk. And these Trump are, rally in Texas. Right. John, you got these links, right, bud? Ready. OK, so uh, w- this first video I want to play is titled this. In case you needed another reason to hate Indiana Attorney General Todd Rakita. Here we go. Uh, Todd Rakita went to the Texas rally. <laughs> Indiana Attorney General working hard, uh, went to Texas and got a shout out from the former president, number 45. Let's, let's go ahead and hear him. Another man who's done a fantastic job, Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita. Todd, thank you very much. Todd Rokita. Thank you. Good. I'm going to go throw up real quick. I'll be right back. I think I just threw up my mouth a little bit. He doesn't bit. know him. You can tell. Yeah. Because yeah, the way totally he pronounced tell. it, he's like, Todd Rokita. Yeah. But Todd was probably like, I just, he Uh-oh. just, my hero. So Todd was in Texas because he looked behind so, him. Like he yeah. Was, so yeah, so there, apparently, John, there were some attorney generals that were invited to Texas to uh, tour the wall or the wall that Trump built, part of the wall that Trump built. So they were down there like visiting and checking things out. And of course, some of them went to the rally, mm. some specific ones that were invited. Mm-hmm. But like this reminds me of a conversation Kevin Smith had with me a long time ago about Todd Rakita. About Kevin, you mind if I go here? 
No, I mean, I because I, you it's said just something. An analogy. I don't. It wasn't an analogy. Anybody, it was an analogy, and you didn't want to offend anybody. But Kevin said, you know, back in World War II, uh, back when in Germany, when Hitler was going around and rounding people up and and getting you know residents to side with him. There was certain residents that fought and tried to hide Jewish people and tried to protect the Jewish people, and there are certain residents that went right along with it. Yep. You said to me one time, and, I, and it hit home. You're like, Todd Rakita is the kind of person that would have gone right along with it. I, I, and, oh, and my God. It's the truth, man. Kevin <laughs> wow. freaking hit it on. He, he's, it's the truth. I just think he's It's an, the truth. He's me, a, He's yeah. evil, man. I, and I, the reason I, I mean, I guess that's, you know, I, that's again, I don't want to. Yeah, I guess what I meant was that he's just an opportunist to me. I just... Think did, he, he sees did I quote you incorrectly? I'm sorry. No, I, I don't think you did. I, I think that he sees a, a channel for him to victory, and he'll do anything in his – nothing in his path will stop him from that. So he sees the Trump base as a way for him to become governor. And so he's going to do whatever it takes. No matter how unethical. No matter what it is. No matter what Trump No matter does. what – yeah, no matter how offensive it may be, he's going to do it just because he wants to get the base riled up. And he's, I mean, look, like he went on TV a month ago, even the governor, right? His own party mm -hmm. said people like Todd Rakita and the comments the attorney general said are dangerous. And it was because he said, I don't believe any numbers regarding COVID coming out of any government. Nothing. They're all liars. Zero. I believe nothing. I am the truth seeker. Yeah. I am the, like, that is, it's like a dictator. I'm going to take on uh, the Valparaiso, what was it? The, the Confucius, Confucius Institute. Institute. Right. I mean, I'm going to. By the way, it, Valparaiso is struggling to survive. And they got the attorney general digging up their butt with something because they get a couple bucks from China. I'm going to send out a parent's uh, bill of rights so you can mm -hmm. go to your school boards and mm -hmm. know what your rights are. I mean, it's just. Partisan school board elections. It's all, right. It's we all not, about riling up the, the, the base that he feels is going to make I'm him I'm sorry governor. if I put words in your mouth. Okay. I mean, I just, think, I just. No, but it's I, true, man. But back then, when you have a dictator rising. And, and doing illegal things and changing the way we do business. There's certain people that go along with it, and there's certain people that rise up and say enough is enough. Okay? I mean, I think if you look back at what happened in Germany, and I'm no expert, but I mean, I'm you know, no it, all, it all starts with words, and then the next thing you know, it's become policy and it's become the government. You just have to be careful. You have to be careful not to slippery. Not you have to hold up the Constitution. You shouldn't spit it in its face. You know, and I, that gets John. Me. Yeah, I know Todd Rakita. Okay, I've I've covered this guy like. And I know you probably don't know him, and and maybe the for the Trump people out there, when they hear that Todd Rakita is like so tight with Donald Trump, they're like, I like Todd Rakita. He's the worst politician I've ever met, as far as like he's he's the worst, the most phony, the most fake, the most like non caring. Like he's the worst of the worst, and he is completely using the Attorney General's office, and he's a psychophant to Trump for one reason only, because he wants to be governor of this state, and he is the worst man. We cannot let that happen. Do you I, think he has a shot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I definitely think he has a shot. He's going to be running. Because Holcomb's termed out, right? You're right. Holcomb's Absolutely. termed out. Yeah. He's going to run, and he is completely, first off, he's campaigning every day. Right here. Got I keep this envelope right here close to me. The Hammond Area Hoosier Assessment, commissioned by Attorney General Todd Rakita. I've never seen that from an Attorney General. Sends out like what a- What is it? It's a, it's a cam, it's, it's it's actually, campaign piece. It's a campaign piece masked, with paper with masked in a uh, Lake County ballot- you know, tell me your opinions on these issues and donate some money to me. It was, it was it, well, was it from mm. his campaign or was yeah. it from? Yeah, well, it was from his, it kind of masked though. You wouldn't even know it. Right. Mm. Right. Commissioned by Attorney General Chad Rakita, important document sent to, sent to my house. Right. Um, it was a campaign. He's the worst place. man. And like, he's not a good attorney general. He's just like trying to like get Trump supporters, you know, to, to follow him to the governor's he's office. He's a syncophant mm -hmm. for sure. So yeah. anyway, if I misquoted you, I apologize. No, I mean, I think I, it's just an analogy. I mean, I didn't, obviously, I don't, I'm not calling him a Nazi or anything. I'm just saying that he's, I mean, it reminds me of folks that just went he's along. A not, I mean, Allegedly. He's a Nazi facilitator <laughs> is what you're saying, right? <laughs> he's a sympathizer, An right? An SS card oh or something. God. I don't know. <laughs> this All right. so dark. Let's go no, to the next. he's the worst, man. Let's go he's to the, the next video. Let's go to the next video. Like, why don't we? We dug a hole deep enough. Let's <laughs> yes, move on. Okay, okay this is, is this on Trump on corrupt elections and riots. All right. This is something. <laughs> oh, I love this. If these radical, vicious, racist prosecutors do anything <laughs> wrong or illegal, I hope we are going to have in this country the biggest protest we have ever had in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Atlanta, and elsewhere, because our country and our elections are corrupt. Amen. <laughs> oh, I just when he's saying that, you just start thinking of. I, 
a sublime song. <laughs> Really? Music yeah. starts going in the back of my I head. I felt like we should have been going, dun, 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 You know the song. Burn, April 29th, 1992. <laughs> there was a riot on the street. Tell me, where were you? You know that song? You were sitting yeah. home watching your TV while I was participating in some anarchy. The part that reminds me of it is, the, the, <laughs> let it burn, let it burn. But, uh, the cities. Riots on the streets of Miami. Riots on the streets of Chicago. <laughs> on the streets of Long Beach. San Francisco, Louisiana, Boise, Idaho. You know, yep. that was that whole part. Blood in Eureka, the streets, California, it's up to my ankles. Eureka, California, let it burn, let it burn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that Doors song, right? There's blood in the streets of town of Chicago. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The Doors, right? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Peace Frog, right? <laughs> yes. All hey, blood stuff. in the streets. I, I love that you just like rattled off the the cities. That's what made it me think of it. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, Washington. All right. So anyway, <laughs> that's uh, Trump there, and uh, you know Todd Todd Rikid is out there clapping the whole time. Right. This is an interesting part here. Okay. Yeah. This, this got is, some news. This this, this is a uh, Trump news. on January six rioters, and Kevin brought something up to me that I never thought about until yesterday this is interesting okay this is the part that we're going to read off a quote in the constitution and i'm interested to see your guys response to this if i run and if i win we will treat those people from january 6th fairly we will treat them fairly and if it requires pardons we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly god what a load of shit dude what a asshole god it Freaking boils my freaking blood to hear that shit. I thought there was a there was an interesting rebuff by many Republicans about that comment. Hold before we go there. Yeah, John. Yeah, help me out, Trump supporter. Help me out. You know, like, this they're isn't... being treated so unfairly. They're freaking broke into the Capitol and attacked police. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, they've been treated. This so is unfairly. not a foreign thought. You know, when I saw this on the show notes, like just a couple weeks ago. A guy named Mark Penn, who was an advisor for Hillary and Bill yeah, when he was in the White House, sure. he actually was on TV saying, "Should Biden pardon the nonviolent January 6 protesters to fulfill his promise to unite the country?" <laughs> so this isn't the this isn't the nonviolent. non-violent? Yes, so the, the ones non-violent. that just walked in, but the ones but that you Trump saw, didn't say yeah. that, John. Hold it, Trump didn't Hold say it. he didn't delineate. <laughs> okay, so like the ones that just walked in, Kevin, which there say, were many. They, the violent ones were in front of you. They broke all the doors and all that, and the doors were gaping open. And then you walk in. You don't do anything wrong. You take a couple pictures, and then you turn around and leave. I heard an interesting Should now, they be in I, the gulags right well, now? I would, not, I number would, one, they're not in the gulags. Okay. And <laughs> really? Because there's some really bad reports about that. There are but, not, right? Okay. That was I Aaron in Dominican word. Republic, John. <laughs> so, the gulag is but no, what, what I, I, I heard they say gulag. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gulag. I, the, I think um, the one thing I would say about that analysis and I heard something about this, and it's interesting. You don't really have a riot without, or you don't really have an insurrection or a riot without a lot of people. So the fact that the police got overrun, it wasn't because there were you know, 20 violent people there. It's because there were thousands of people that overran the police. There were thousands of people that probably, or hundreds at least, that entered the Capitol. So, I mean, if you're there, you know you shouldn't be there. Agree. However, I think in the interest of uniting the country... John's idea is a good one for the nonviolent offenders. Whoa, that's mm. a breaking news. I don't know sound about that. I've ever heard I do. I don't Kevin, know tell me that. to shut up. No, yeah. I don't know about it. Don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. <laughs> I, don't I think if you violate the law, I mean, there's. But, like, I think that would go a, a long way. The, well, a lot no, of them are getting misdemeanor. A lot of them are Any getting misdemeanor. Any of the people that attacked, wouldn't that be a lot cleaner if the only people we were talking about in January 6th were the ones that were breaking things, attacking people? On video beating. Right. You know. Those Sitting people in Nancy have Pelosi's to be punished. desk. If you walked in an office, that doesn't count to you. Yeah, I'm talking I, about the ones that, just, and there were what, Kevin, ones that just walked through like a tourist. If you're scaling the Capitol, if you're storming agree, the doors agree. and shoving Breaking people in windows, and going in with the mob, a cop, if you're going like in that. with the mob, anything like that. But like, there are people that walked in and did nothing as far as destructive. I think those people should be treated completely different. And right? I think they are, by the way, okay. under the I law. Think, uh, there, there are many that have not been charged, by the way. John's, uh, John's idea would go a long way with those nonviolent. Non-destructive. It would have to be. Six. It would have to be somebody that absolutely didn't understand what they were doing. I bet you there's opinion. hundreds of people that walked in and did nothing. And right. I think hundreds of people. Those hundreds of people have not been charged. I, I hope you're right. I think but if they, no, but I don't think so, John. No, the ones that attack cops. 
the ones that broke things, scaled the walls, yeah. went into personal private offices, stole things, mm -hmm. threatened people, mm -hmm. freaking screw them. Yeah, Those are insurrectionists. Following police down the stairs and up the stairs, like threatening them. They are mm -hmm. insurrectionists. I agree. Domestic well, terrorists. The whole point was to overturn the business of Congress, which was ongoing to certify an election. But didn't, doesn't John's point make a point? There are people there that I'm sure should not be charged, and I'm hoping they aren't. And, if they, are, and if they are, <laughs> then maybe we should take a look at that. In case Biden is listening, it is the most brilliant move. I mean, what would the I Republicans it, would be like? They would, what do we even say at this then point? Then you're but, only defending the, the violent, you're only defending the destructive, and, and it's a completely different thing. And you have to make sure. I love it, John. I think but that's listen a great to this. Move. That's a great Trump didn't move. delineate that. How often do I say that on LockPod? Never. Never. <laughs> I agree. Never. Trump so didn't first. delineate. And that's what we have to look at is what Trump's words are. He said January 6th. I agree. But and wouldn't John's issue. idea differentiate? Because then if Trump is defending January 6th, the only people that are getting persecuted for January 6th are the violent, destructive, you know, the ones that broke at, in. At the end of the day, you have to look at each case. And I think pardon cases especially, you have to look at each case individually. You can't just be like, oh, it's a blanket pardon for oh. everyone. You know. Okay, so anyway, one of the interesting questions about this, this is interesting, is there's a section of the Constitution that some people feel that, Donald Trump disqualified himself from ever running for president again because of something in the U.S. Constitution. It's in the U.S. Constitution, 14th Amendment, Section 3. Now, please just bear with me. This is interesting, okay? Mm -hmm. No person shall be as... And I'm think a, about when the 14th Amendment, sec, 14th Amendment was passed, 1868, so Reconstruction, post-Civil right War. Right after the Civil War. Yeah. So in, right after the Civil War, right after an we had people that fought against the United States. So the fear at that time was, what if one of these Southern generals or something runs for president or and, senator or senator and become and they're insurrectionists, right? Mm -hmm. So what they did at that time is that in the Fourteenth Amendment they put this in, and I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna focus on the presidency, okay? It's no, a little wordy. So. It's wordy, so bear with me. No person shall be a president or vice president. Okay, so under the United States, okay, having previously taken an oath. Having previously taken an oath. So stop right there. That means that if Trump wanted to run for president again, did he previously take an oath? Yes, he did. Having previously taken an oath. I'm trying to, to support the to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two thirds of each house, remove such a disability. So what they're saying is if you have served as president or vice president or senator or whatever, and you took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States. Which Trump did. Which he did. We all agree. And you, and, and you are giving aid and comfort to people that engaged in insurrection or rebellion. If you did that... You disqualify yourself from You have a disability again. and you cannot run for office. Unless two-thirds of the House and Senate get released from the disability. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the Constitution. It's interesting. It's an interesting argument. I've seen it like so kind what, of— So based on Trump's remarks, that's what you're saying? This yeah, I mean, I think that's the, that's the— Because what he's saying is, get me into office and I will give you aid and comfort by pardoning you. Yes. But that's the argument. Uh, I'm just saying, right. I mean, it's mm -hmm, a— it's, mm -hmm. and So I think the way that would it's happen— It's an interesting would, argument, It's man. interesting. I mean, it's interesting, right? I mean, it's, it's at least fun to discuss. Because, like, he's dangling— I mean, th th first off, let's take a step back. All of us, please. Mm -hmm. He's saying to people that attacked the Capitol, and John focuses on the people that were nonviolent, and that's his right, okay? But there were people that threatened. There were people that destroyed. There were people that, that beat on and killed. And tried to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power that right. was being— that was actually taking place right. in Congress that day at that moment. So Donald Trump in this speech is saying, they're being treated so unfairly. Mm -hmm. And if I'm elected president, I will pardon all of you. That is giving aid and comfort to enemies insurrectionists. Of the, enemies of the state. Yeah. John, we're a country, man. This is what worries me is like, we can't get on the same page. Like this guy is evil, dude. Like you, people who want to be Republicans, be Republicans. My dad and I had this conversation yesterday. I'm like, like you guys got to get this guy out of your party. He's, he said, well, he's, I mean, really what we need to do, he's a danger, in my opinion, to the Republic. And I, I agree. think that's the thing. And I, and I have a lot of Republican friends that I admire, uh, respect. I mean, John's one of them. And, yeah. and, and, and so it's really, to me, he's a danger. To the, I, I want the Republican Party to have a candidate that can take Biden on. And if they beat him, I'm like, you know what? He's our president now, or she's our president now. And I, if Putin invades Ukraine... When it happens, you where is Donald win, Trump? Not if. Okay, where's Trump going to lie on this? 
I would never let it happen. Where is Trump going to land? Even is Trump like going to be with Putin or is he going to be with Ukraine? I know where I am. I think I know where my country is. Mm -hmm. That's the interesting question is Putin is, you know, Trump's idol. Yeah. Is he going to be with the dictator invading another country with no justification? I mean, these are interesting questions, man. I'm with you. <sighs> All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, just having oh. Donald Trump in the news got me PTSD. So, <laughs> yeah. jeez, man. Let's, let's close it on a All good right. note. All right. John, do we leave you hanging? I'm sorry, man. I'm hanging on what? I don't know. No, I living on a I, prayer. You know, when Tom, when you say let's take a step back, I think for me, I also take a step back and think it's hard to, for me to believe a guy in bullhorns and makeup and a skirt is going to overthrow America. It's not one person, though. It was. It, that's the whole I point. Just, I agree. That person alone would not overthrow America. Him and a thousands. mob could try to interrupt the peaceful transfer. They of did power. interrupt it, but they they end up completing the. They did interrupt the peaceful transfer of power, but it took place later on that evening. They did interrupt it. Let's be honest. They were counting it, and then they had to retreat. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they had to go into hiding. <laughs> Wordle. <laughs> yeah, Wordle. Let's talk about Wordle. <laughs> you want to you get addicted to something else? There's a new <laughs> game on your phone, on the internet, that's taking the world by storm. Kevin, you gave interesting. This is called Wordle. Wordle. Actually, I want to thank Ethan. He's the one who turned me on to it. Really? Son, Ethan. Ethan. Yeah, yesterday. So, like, I am not very good at these types of things. It's sort of like crossword puzzle reminds me of. And I got it in four guesses yesterday. It's addicting. It's not easy. And you only get I got one lucky. a day. One, I got the lucky. whole the whole world gets the same word. Wow. Yeah. This was this was developed by a guy in New York as a gift to his partner. And uh in November, ninety people played it. Yesterday, three hundred thousand people played it. And the New York Times it. bought it. I got it. It was light yesterday. Yeah. I got it. Yes. It's it took gone me four after... shots to it get it. Good. It, it the New York Times bought it for, for their over puzzle. a million. Wow. Low seven figures, they said. Wordle. Some guy just developed it. And Tom's about to sell his 5% number game <laughs> for that, too, <laughs> if this Senate thing doesn't work yeah, out. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're dead or you're, you, you, you're alive. You're alive or you're dead. <laughs> yep. Okay, how, so how does this work, guys? This you is the first a, time I'm playing this okay, game. Okay, in the top one, you type in a five-letter word. So okay. there's, there's six chances, right? So you basically just type in any five-letter word, mm. and you have six chances to guess what the word is because after you type in the five-letter word, it either gives you green, meaning that the letter's in the right spot. Oh. Yellow that the letter's in the word but not in the right spot, or gray it's not in the in the word. Gravy. G -R -A. Oh, all right. Type it in. Gravy. Let's go. This is today's. Gravy. Okay. G R. And then hit enter on the bottom left. Bottom left. Okay. Okay. So and then it tells Whoa. you zero. Gravy. Zero out of five. That sucks. All right. How about um, thick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're losing people. Oh, 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 oh. So T and H are in the right spot. So another five word, the five letter word with T and H in the first two letters. So T A -E R. -E. Okay, do it. Okay. No T H E R E. No, no, that won't work. T H E I R. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, I and R are already out, but. Oh, I's okay. Oh. So these letters are already out. Mm -hmm. Is what you're saying? Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Gotcha. Try th throw. T H R O W. Yeah, yeah, even okay. though R's out, but try throw. Ooh. Oh. What's the orange? Th Oh, that's oh, uh, yellow means it's the letters in there. It's just in the wrong location. Whoa. Th. Can we get this? Can we get this? Come on, this? Joe. Where are you at? I have here? no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to think of another one. Hmm. This is how to yeah. This is how to lose our audience. So anyway, All right, so that's Wordle. Yeah, so that's Wordle, everybody. Good luck We're today. We're almost there, guys. Good luck we today. Have this thing. Wrap it up, Mayor. Yeah, we're wrapping up. Okay. We have John's going to get Wordle. To, we have places to be, but uh, I appreciate the audience for listening today. Uh, I think it was a great show. We are off in armored vehicle to the Indiana Secretary of State's office shortly after, so I can file my papers to run for the United States Senate. So thank you to the hundreds of people that supported me in this endeavor. Thank you to the thousands of people that signed my petitions. Thank you to all my donors that helped make this possible. Uh, to my wife, of course, Marissa, to Kevin Smith. Like, hey, guys, could we give it up a little bit to Kevin Smith for a, a great job coordinating yeah. all this? Yeah, God. Thank you, Give Mary. Kevin a day off. We got to get him down there today. I'll give him a day off on November 4th. <laughs> So you won't make it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. So, uh, but everybody, I appreciate you very much. So uh, we're off. Thanks for watching Lockpod. Good job, everyone. By we're the way, off. I got a guest coming. that's going to blow your mind. A gentleman that runs Mission South Shore Dispensary. Uh, that's in Chicago. Chicago. Wow. He's one of the big bosses is going to be our main guest. And we're going to talk about the cannabis industry in Illinois Love it. and in America. Um, yeah. I was just talking to a person in the industry yesterday 
and talking about how it's BS that the whole thing is cash and all that. And he goes, you know, one of the people that work here was trying to buy a house and they won't let them get a mortgage because they work in the marijuana industry. Wow. It's such a joke. And that's, you know, that's, that's good stuff to talk about. Cause it, it, I think the industry is interesting as it is. And just the ability to not be able to do things as an industry because of regulation and yep. because it's not legal. So that'll be great. All right. Anyway, thanks everybody. Play Wordle. Uh, and uh, well, we're, we've almost got this. I'm gonna keep. We're gonna mute, <laughs> but I'm gonna keep the live stream going because chat's helping us right now. Okay. Jim Talon says, "Have Bose. a good one." All right. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Talk to you next week. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> That's great. We just ruined it for the whole world. By the way. <laughs> Nobody's watching. Thanks, this. Jim.